Good afternoon, everybody. This live hangout from the workshop is underway. It is Wednesday, August 30th, 2017. I am Rosie O'Kelly. This is the Rosie O'Kelly channel, and we're doing another live repair workshop hangout. And I have not done one of these probably since February or March. Of course, we've had a lot of different projects to do, uh, selling an RV, buying another rig, and there's always uh, has things to do with surgeries and just have not had a chance to get into the workshop. So I'm happy to be here today with a, well, I think a pretty nice, well, vanilla, project we have a beautiful pioneer a 1970 model tx 700 stereo tuner and what makes pioneer especially great and especially collectible is that their their tuners or the parts of the system that detect signals from the air and turn them into uh, broadcast or audio frequencies that we hear are tend to be very complicated and they tend to be world class in their ability to uh, pull signals from there we have what's called a dead unit here now i have a mobile cam i'll bring you guys over to take a look at the uh, unit cosmetically it's in good shape it's been fiddled with a few times as they usually are usually when something goes wrong with a unit by the time i get to it two or three repair people have already been into it and uh, kind of mucked around with it so you kind of have to reverse engineering and undo some of the things that uh, they do uh, before you can really get in in earnest so this was a uh, thrift shop pickup for me about four years ago and it has done nothing but sit here in the workshop and we're trying to just work through let me just adjust this i'm feeling good today let's see here we go there we go. Hi, Keith. How are you? So I'll bring you in for, I know a couple people have asked me, when are you going to do one of these uh, repair hangouts? So I want to get down and dirty on this one because it's it's got, I think, some simple issues. I've already spent about an hour going over changing out uh, one component, a filter capacitor uh, that had gone bad up on top, and I'll show you. Uh, luckily, I had a another unit there the, uh, the lighting is a mess on it it is a tuner which means it is not you know you don't hook speakers directly up to this component systems were very popular from the 1950s 60s 70s and 80s right until about the early 90s the best uh, listening high fidelity and uh, stereophonic equipment always use separate components for for the best experience you would have a, a tuner you'd have a pre-amplifier you have an amplifier you might have an equalizer you might have a reel-to-reel -reel and a Kai or a Sony reel-to-reel -reel deck and then you would put those in a 19 inch rack configuration and the theory was that if you bought the best of each of those components, the best tuner, the best amplifier, the best pre-amplifier, the best um, equalizer board, the best speakers, you could have the very, very best audio experience. Of course, we know these days, though, that the reality is the technology is such and such digitalized and everything that uh, things can be made pretty precise now. But still, there's something romantic about the era of the 1950s through the 1970s when it came to uh, audio and especially the, the vintage age of audio. So I will prop this up here a little bit. The shop is pretty clean, I'm happy to say. I had a doctor appointment uh, today. Uh, so that all went well. Let me just prop this up a little bit. I have everything, everything very safe on here. So just to bring everybody in here this is the uh, this is the unit this is the uh, pioneer you can see it's badge the pioneer tx-700 this is circa 1970 
and it has some interesting aspects to this uh, unit. It's very dirty. You can see it's got some bugs down beneath there. I'm going to be removing this front piece, but it has a nice uh, wood on a on a brushed uh, brushed aluminum finish that's in good shape. It's the only reason I collect stuff is it's got to have a good face. Hey, uh, hey, Daniel, how are you? It's got to get have a good face on it. Uh, otherwise, I'm not dealing in uh, scratch merchandise because people look at these with their eyes too. And if you're going to be a collector of this type of vintage material, you need to have the best looking that you can afford. And these, these can still be had for less than a couple hundred dollars. All the prices are going up very quickly. Inside, I'd have to say it really needs a blow job in here because there's a lot of dirt and a lot of dust in here. I've been up in here a little bit today and tried to uh, clean up. We have the uh, detector and the uh, tuner board over here. You can tell by all the intermediate frequency and radio frequency coils over here. Um, you have a second. This is probably AM detection over here on this board. This is the FM. Uh, you have the regulator here and the uh, power supply board. It's probably mounted underneath down in here. So it has a pretty good size. It's got a dual uh, dual core uh, tuner here, which is nice, a nice beefy output, uh, excuse me, power transformer. Now the wiring is all mucked up for the uh, for the lighting, so it's not going to be much, not going to be much I can do on the lighting uh, today. But I want to kind of at least uh, give it the once over and give it an assessment. Let's look at the back of it too. You can see I've already got my output uh, jacks fooling around to see if I got anything out of that from the uh, from the uh, FM or AM. I didn't get anything. So it can take a tape deck uh, recorder in here too. And uh, although nobody really uses tape decks much anymore, a switched power, unswitched power supply, which means if you plug something in here, it'll stay. The power will stay on as long as the switch is on to that other item. And then you're grounding your antenna, AM and FM. And all, this is your AM ferrite loop. And a lot of these don't survive because people had a habit of using these to grab onto to carry these units. So you don't see many that are still on. So it makes another very collectible unit when you have that. So let's look at the back. I'm always interested in seeing some of the stats, uh, Pioneer Electric Corporation, you can see on the back there. Uh, now this came out of Canada, you can see Ontario Hydroelectrical Approvals. So this had to be approved for use in uh, Canada there. So that's where this came out of. And you can see the badge there, the model TX700. So there, there's not a lot to it. The main thing that this is designed to do is to pull broadcast signals out of the air with as much fidelity as possible and uh, that's all it needs to do and then it takes that and it feeds it into an amplifier and we do have our uh, we do have our little archer one watt amplifier and if you haven't ever seen the uh, video uh, the one tube amplifier for the littlest one tube amplifier versus Tchaikovsky it's pretty cool if you check that out, it's a lot of people have enjoyed that, that video hearing Tchaikovsky's uh, War of 1812 Overture in a one watt, uh, one watt system. So, all right, we've got the yeah, hello, yeah, Pioneer that age had blue lights. Actually, this just had has white winds. Hi, Flan. Hi, Darth. I hope you're doing okay down in uh, down in. Uh, the flood area down there. This has uh, really uses the white lights as you can see here. And our, our light string is out. We've got something going on with that, but we got bigger fish to fry at this point in time than that uh, that light switch. That's for sh that lighting situation. So I uh, did go ahead and replace this today. This filter capacitor over here was bulged out. I was lucky I had another one. It just slid in there, and I got that, that soldered in from the bottom there. So 
I think we're just about reaching the point in the hangout where we can put a little bit of fire to this. I want to go ahead and do some lubrication because this this is really hard to turn this tuner tuner doll here and it's it's very sluggish. So I'm going to get the lubricant out now and I'm going to work on lubricating that. So I'm going to set the cam back over here and I want to welcome all of you who are watching a lot of a lot of my vintage friends will watch this during the week. We all do this stuff all the time with each other. So let me just grab the lubricant here. And I like to use a, what's called a deoxid. You never want to use WD-40 or something like that. It'll, it'll just destroy the plastics on the... Uh, on the unit it'll just wreck them so what I want to do what I'm actually probably going to do is remove this uh, remove this face plate on here and these are not these are not original knobs these are mix, mix and match stuff that uh, you know you find the stuff in thrift shops with all different knobs and stuff on it. So let me get my uh, little wrenches here and I want to remove this uh, remove this front piece here. Okay. That's the first thing I want to do is get that off of there. Let's see if I got my I gotta kind of take it easy. I gotta I don't want Jen to catch me doing too much here. Two days after surgery, your brain me. All I need is something with just a slight and a little more horsepower in it. I really don't want to, I don't like to scratch up these things, they're very delicate. Obviously, it's not like you're going to go to a store and get another one. And this is all moisturized, like this is kind of rusty, this part, which makes me think that it's sat around outside. So I am removing and we can uh, get inside and lubricate a little bit better here. That should, yeah, just slide right off in there, just like that. And uh, as usual, this looked like it had some bugs living inside of it. And, <clears throat> not unusual. Let me put this back up here. Not unusual. Thing. Hi, Josh. How are you? There we go. Hope you guys can see okay. So, okay, that removes out pretty good. That's in pretty good shape, that face plate. There's no big scratches. It's a mess on the inside. It looked like a roach colony or something was living in there. And it also had the uh, repair initials from probably some Canadian company that did some work on it. So we want to set that aside very carefully. And the real one we got to be careful of is the glass because the glass is absolutely irreplaceable. So we want to... Uh, Work that out of its holder real easily. First one side, and then out of the other. This is the stuff people cry when they ruin this stuff, doing repair stuff. So you better have a really light touch. Don't just take this and put it in the dishwasher, or all that silk screen will come right off. There it is. So we'll take that inside later and we'll clean that up. That's got a few miles on it that you can see. So 
So again, I'm going to put this in a clean place, safe place. And now I have a little better access. You can see some moth uh, set up shop in there. Look at that. You can clean that up a little bit. Obviously, our pointer light is out, but I cannot worry about the the lighting section right now. We've got to worry about just basically getting sound. So, okay. There's that. See, it's a pretty pretty dirty unit. And this is typically the way they come in. This is one of the early units that has presets. You could preset your preset your channels and then just your stations and then just click them. Pretty cool, huh? All right, so now I'm going to get the uh, I'm going to get the lubrication out and try to lubricate. Get in here. I guess I'm going to have to take off the bottom of the unit now and sit it on its side to get the best access to that. I'm trying to sit this in a good location here. I'm trying to kill you guys on the camera here today. So let's see if I can uh, sit this up. You know, I don't know what these, these people do these crazy, crazy side fuses and stuff. Or if there's one, I got one on the other side. That's supposed to be the lighting for it. It's probably wired in series, meaning if one of them goes out, these little fuse lamps. I got my magnifying glass here. Take a closer look at this. They're called little fuse lamps. They look like fuses, but they provide light. Well, we'll sit that aside for the moment. We'd have to try replacing those two. I don't have my schematic. I probably should, but I've done so many of these by by heart shouldn't be that big of an issue let's go ahead and remove I'm going to open up the door to let a little bit of air in to Rosie's Vintage Audio Repair Shop. One of the great joys in my life. Pardon me, I know my face still looks swollen. I still got some bruising. It's supposed to be 110 here this weekend. I'm not looking forward to that. Guys are pretty quiet out there today. I guess not people aren't used to. It's been so long since I did these. Uh, these are usually winter time activities anyway. The air feels good coming through here now. All right. All right, there we go. This is the bottom. And we want to give a good close look underneath of here 
This is the second time I've had this off today. But I wanted to be here with you guys to check these all out. You can see underneath it's got a lot of fuses. Hi, Nana. Problem is all the plastic is crowded is clouded up, so it's really hard to see if any of them have uh, gone bad. And that's really that's really important. So I'm gonna sit this down a minute and get the magnifying glass. Important security message. Let's turn off that idiot. All right. I do have a vintage turntable, but you got to know your limits, uh, Daniel. And I sent mine out to VMA Vintage Music uh, up in uh, Michigan to be restored. Uh, there's so much to specialize in this stuff. Get this thing on real time here. There's so much stuff to get to to do, and uh, you just can't be a jack of everything. That one looks okay. They look okay. So let's go ahead now and uh, let's go ahead and lubricate because I hate to remove all the little plastic tubing that's around them. Otherwise, you risk a short circuit and all that kind of stuff. There we go. So we got that open enough now that we can get some of our lubricant and make sure your unit is unplugged. You don't want to get a shock off of it. It won't kill you, but uh, it'll make you remember to do it next time, right? So, there we go. That's what I'm going to do now. No, it's not Blue George. He's one of our neighbor dogs. Is I'm going to come in here. You can see all the uh, switches where you lock in the stations that you want, your default stations up front. I want to lubricate them. I want to lubricate, try to get down in here into some of these uh, down here. And of course, our switches here to get lubrication into them too. The good news tuners aren't a lot of things like bass and treble and all that, so it shouldn't be, uh, shouldn't be too difficult to work that uh, lubrication into there. So. See if we can get that set right there. Hi, hi, Allison. I'm going to start with this. Uh, just our basic power switch here. And our AM, FM. Here. I'm going to put the knob on to help me turn a little bit and work it. Then we'll work that back and forth, that lubrication in there. Make sure that's making real good contact on there. Well, the on-off switch sounds much better now. 
Then I'm going to lubricate these contact switches. Just working them back and forth. And welcome to you. Okay, Daniel, take care. All right. And then lastly, we want to hit these uh, these here. They're a little harder to hit from the back. This is where you get your. Uh, this is where you get your presets for locking in the stations that you want. If you have any corrosion or anything, it'll come in all crackly. Some people have old vintage units. They're like, "Why is my sound all crackly?" It's because your volume doll's not making good contact. Or your uh, tuner, your phase travel. That feels pretty good now. Put that across the front a little bit. Plug this in for a minute. Okay, so I'm all pretty satisfied that's well lubricated in there. Everything else looks good below. I don't see any uh, signs of anything that's uh, any other bulging capacitors or Pioneer always uses really good quality stuff. Really good components. I don't see any evidence of scorching. good all the wiring I don't see I always check all the wire wraps too you can see where they're connected to the board I like to make sure that they're uh, they're good and solid connected too and I don't see any any wires that look loose often I'll see wires because people move these things around they ship them and they get messed up There's, uh, there's something loose over here. Something I think I dropped in earlier when I was mopping around. So I don't see anything else that's uh, loose on there. You got to give everything a good visual inspection. Okay. Guys, back up there now. That looks okay. Now we'll leave the bottom off. We'll be very careful. That's why I have no metal, per, no metal particles or anything on here. Let's go ahead and sit that down. And I always try to use a, uh, I always try to use a piece of carpet on the surface to protect all the uh, all the finishes and everything. So. You don't want to ruin them. So let me plug this in and see if I'm getting any signs of life after replacing that one capacitor there. Let me try putting the antenna on. Let's see if I'm getting anything. Oh, 
Oh, I got it. I forgot. I got to I've got to lubricate the tuner stuff too. This uh, this tuner dial is too tough to move. It's too difficult to move along. It tells me it's binding in certain places, so I'm going to lubricate some of the points where that's binding. I don't want to get it on the string. Okay, that's critical because if you get it on the tuner string, then you're going to have all kinds of problems. I'm going to put some uh, lubrication. I'm going to lubricate this little rail too. Put some lubrication. See, it has this little. Okay, Jim, thank you. It's got this little. It's got this little rail up here that I want to lubricate so that this slides along this. The uh, indicator dial slides along here real well. And there's a couple other points that I want to make sure are lubricated too, particularly down in here. I don't want to get any on the uh, on the big uh, tuning of variable capacity. I don't want to get anything on the tuner uh, core here. Keep it off there. So let me grab the can and do the rest of it. All right. Okay, bye, Keith. Have a good day at work. Thanks for popping in. Go ahead and do this one. Got to be very careful here. What I also want to get is I can tell there's a lot of goo. I'll show you guys. Another big problem we'd have down here when this gear, with this gear meshing down here, you can see right down here this gearing on the uh, variable capacitor, which is what this, uh, what this big tuner, uh, double veined uh, uh, tuner, uh, variable capacitor. It has some gearing down here, and this looks all gummed up. It's very dirty down in here. So I'm going to go get some Q-tips and try to clean some of the stuff off out of down there. I don't know how well you can see that. But I'm going to sit this right here, and I'm going to go... Go grab that. I'm going to go grab a Q-tip. I'll be back in a couple of minutes. All right, I am back. I have a couple of Q-tips, four Q-tips here. Three, actually, three Q-tips. I'm going to sit this right here. Watch you guys, I'm going to tilt the board up here. You clean that up. I'm going to actually turn this gear. Wow, that is so dirty. I'm trying to clean the little gear teeth in there. Woo, boy. A lot of goo came off of that.
journey all that is. Unreal. Let's go ahead and put some more lube on that now. Being very careful not to get any on the string. I'm going to work that back and forth. And I've got one more point on the bottom here. So it already looks like it's uh, it's starting to move a little better here. It's not perfect yet going up and down. But it's starting to gradually work itself in better and better. Honey, are you out there? Uh-oh. Yes, I'm here. What are you doing? Are you working? No, I'm just playing around a little bit. Just playing around. You better not be working. Okay. Or I'm going to have to spank you. <laughs> In that case, I'm working. <laughs> oh, I see. No, I know, Susie. I shouldn't be doing this right now. Okay, I'm just, I'm just playing around, honey. Uh oh. All right. Well, like I was, like I said, this is uh, this is really looking a lot better now. This movement, but it's still not perfect. Still got some, uh, still got a little bit of issues here. I have to make sure all these little wheels are turning freely. You think she thinks I'm working out here? Yeah, probably we're going to have to put a new, eventually put a new tensioner on there. It's working okay from the tuner side. I'm going to have to need some more work on that, but it's no point messing with that if we can't even get any sound or anything out of the unit. Yeah, the doctor visit went great. Hi, Jen. <laughs> oh, jeez.
block a little bit of this light. So I'm just going to. I'm not going to take any more than about five more minutes on this uh, this tuner because it's. If I can't get the unit running, it's it's wasted anyway. But got to be able to be able to turn that. Make sure that's not binding anywhere. Yep, Susie's keeping an eye on me. Hi, everybody. Welcome into the workshop. It's been a long time. Let's try to keep working that in a little bit. There's like do there's also dog hair and all kinds of other stuff. It's like caught in a gearing here. Not crazy about that. It looks like this thing was like at a dog kennel or something. Right. Right now it's just too darn hard to turn. Might need a little heavier lubrication on there. Only, only on this rail, I'll use a little bit of WD-40. Okay, because this, uh, this is not, this other cleaner is not a strong enough lubricant. I think this will make a big difference. All right, guys, that's all I'm going to do for that. Now I want to go ahead and just see. We can manually tune the stations. All that stuff is cosmetic work, you know, getting those fun. But if you can't get the thing running and uh, sounding sounding decent, then it's not, even, it's not even worth it. So what I want to do now is do just a little cleanup down at the bottom here. You see some of that. Some of the crap along there. Some stuff off of that rail too.
the more I work and fiddle with that, the better it'll be. Okay, now let's get down to the main event here. Ugh. Let's try putting some power. We got no lights to the unit at all. Let's try putting, let's try firing this up. Seeing if we get anything. I did replace that one cap there. I just pulled it out of an old unit. I got about 10 of my use around here for just parts and stuff. So. Now what we're going to need to do to get this thing up, set up, we're going to need an amplifier too. So if you're late to the party, you'll know my favorite little amplifier is the little True Test. It's called the True Test 5. And I've used this in many, many videos. I have a really popular one on the channel. It's called the uh, one watt uh, tube, one watt amplifier versus uh, one two one watt amplifier versus Tchaikovsky, and it's, it plays the War of 1812 Overture. It's been a very popular video. So what I'm going to do, I've already kind of got preset here. I have the output coming here from the tuner. And it's going into there. Uh, I need to put, I need to hook up some speakers to that now, and uh, then we'll fire everything up. We got to be very careful. This is called a line-in amplifier. It has no power supply to it. All it does is take 120 volts and shoot it right into the unit there without benefit of a power supply. Therefore, if you touch the wrong thing the wrong way, you could touch 120 volts. They call these things the widow maker. So uh, they're not even legal to be sold in this country anymore. These lining, they just use they just use big resistors to step down the power from 120 volts and then convert that to uh, DC power. So they're they're dangerous. So, but uh, they're part of they're part of uh, audio history. So we keep them. Okay. Hi, Mark. How are you? All right. I'm doing good. Yeah, I, I enjoy. I'm just, I haven't been in the workshop in months, but I cleaned up the workshop. I've had my surgery. Susie, I'm taking it easy. Trust me. I'm not doing too much today. Although the doctor certainly gave me the uh, girly shape up front, that's for sure. Now, let's see. We need another speaker to hook up over here. We got speakers coming at the wazoo here. Come on here. We've got our Bose speakers. Let's see what the other end of this is hooked to. So we got our two Bose speakers. One of the Bose speakers, the computer sitting on top of where you guys are. So let's hook this one up to make sure all of our power is off. Nothing's plugged in. And then we'll hook this up to this, our little baby, uh, our little baby Widowmaker amplifier here. All right. You can see just on the back of it, I'm just uh, hooking up the speakers here, and that's coming out of the uh, coming out of the back of the uh, tuner here. And I'm thinking, although I can't really verify it, I have power because I don't have any lights working on the unit. I think that this should work. This thing was bulged out really bad, but I had to run out and get a collar piece from the store. I didn't want to waste a lot. I didn't even know if I'd be able to find that and get that piece in, but I did get that in. So let's get this other speaker hooked up here. Get that hooked up. To find my little screwdrivers over around here, they are.
Guys, guys ever get these little sets of uh, screwdrivers and stuff? These things are great. You find these at like uh, Harbor Freight and those kind of places. They're fantastic. This one down. Got to be very careful we don't short at these speakers. And uh, let's get the last here. Now we're going to be using this. This little amplifier is going to be taking the input from the tuner, this Pioneer tuner. And God, this is probably the first thing, This, if this tuner comes to life, it's probably the first time in 20 years it's come to life. So what we're going to do is we're going to put it on the uh, what's called the Variac so we can bring the power up to it very slowly and safely because I don't want I don't want anything blowing up or uh, smoking out here this is really the most dangerous part of doing vintage restoration so I've got the power turned all the way down here you can see this is the Variac here Turn that off for a minute. This is the most dangerous part of the whole process. So I'm going to look for my, see if my safety glasses are around. Ah, I can never find the things when I want them. Oh, well. Do I feel lucky? Yeah, so okay. We got that on. Let's go ahead and power. Let's go ahead and power our little amplifier up now. Get some tools clear here. You guys ready? You guys ready for some action? All right, so we're going to put our little. Turn our amplifier on there. Make sure she's lighting up good. Hey, you know what? It might be nice if it was plugged in. Okay, we've got the glow. And right, now we'll go ahead and uh, fire up the unit. Okay, so let's get some fire in the hole. We got our voltage turned all the way down. And we'll turn our power switch on to the unit. Now I'm not going to get any light out of the unit. It's a telltale, but hopefully I'll get some noise. All right, I'm at about uh, 52 volts. And I'm hearing some hissing. Can you hear that? That's a good sign. We're getting something out of it. Let's take our power up a little more. We're 50 volts. Let's go up to about 70. Oh, 
That's us. Well, we got some noise out of it. Every company that is making a profit should pay that should in, be AM. Uh, to the government and should pay in at a similar rate with fewer special deductions and itemizations. But you're going to encourage that. And this always works. When President Reagan lowered the tops tax rate, it was 70% when he took office. But we got in some success, guys, on this. By the time he left office, he had lowered it to 28%. Turn the volume up. Listen to your medical problem? Think twice. Washington Hospital and UCSF Health. Working together? All right, so the tuner is uh, working. Now the time to begin. You wouldn't be able to tell because there's no light. We're on the AM dial. Well, uh, Alexa does other things really well. Both companies, even though they're rivals in a lot of different markets, decided, hey, why don't we have these voice assistants work together to... In this frog? Oh, God, what? Lucky. I see a pre-screened and top-rated pros for... With... With... I got play, you ain't. Yeah. I'm pretty excited. Wow. I'm participating now. Have your gardening questions each week, and Good Food Hour is hosted by Chef John Ash and Steve Garner with delicious insight into cooking, eating, and enjoying good food. It's Garden Talk and the Good Food Hour, Saturday mornings on News Talk 1350 and the new FM 1035 KSRO. From dining, entertainment, health, and wellness, oh God, we got fun, the best deals in Sonoma County are just a click Ooh. away at mysonomadeals.com. Right now, get two sessions at Calistoga Cryo for full body cryotherapy. The sub-zero temperatures activate your body's natural healing process in just Let's three minutes. Let's see what minutes. we get on, Normally, what we get on the FM dial right here. Right now, at mysonomadeals.com, it's only $55. Keep your fingers crossed. Hurry, because it's for a limited time only. Well, we'll be on the dial here. So we work our way up. Let's see. But it's AFC. Let's take it off AFC. But I think you have to buy that, Alexa. <laughs> you know what's going on, guys? I had this locked in. Like, why am I hearing that? I'm trying to tune up the doll and it doesn't do anything. Remember all these presets? These things have got to be in a neutral position. So let's try it again. Oh, is in 70s technology grand. Oh, boy. with our work. We expect the same in the companies we choose to do business with. Hi, I'm Jeff Potter, president of North Bay Landscape Management. We chose to bank with Summit State Bank because they share the same commitment to delivering services we do. It's refreshing to have a bank that... 
All right, here we go. Finally figured out this goddamn doll mechanism. All right, here we go. State Bank, a better company. That's our business. Member of DIC. Sonoma. Bringing you the story of another hometown hero. It's 3 a.m. The phone rings. Someone in Sonoma County is about to give birth, and Roseanne Gephardt is there to help. She wasn't happy with the way mothers and their babies were treated during and after childbirth. So nine years ago, Roseanne will begin. Oh my God, we gotta do bad. This is this sucks. This sucks. Why aren't we getting better signal acquisition here? Huh? I'm getting pissed. Now I'm mad. Uh, pioneers drive me crazy. We should be getting excellent signal acquisition here. So I'm gonna have to fiddle with this uh, with this tuner over here. Oh, hey, smooth boy, am I? Uh, I'm madder than hell. I love Pioneer, but they're the hardest sets to work on. Hello. So I'm gonna have to get into this tuner section here and try to make uh, try to make some adjustments in here. Makes me so mad. Well, the good news is we've got we've got a working unit. The bad news is the unit's pretty brain dead. You know what I'm saying? It's not responding. It's got weird weird controls on it. Oh man! But I do have my Christmas lights to make me happy. Oh boy! All right. So. Get in here and try wide banding this tuner. Let's see if that's going to make a difference. At least for a start, this thing's driving me crazy. I want to get a uh, damn copyright match. Oh, yeah, here we go. Now we're picking up stuff. Now we're picking up stuff. Free access by the system. And if you're already a for ethics, which the father has fixed. But all right, let's try it again, guys. Oh.
All right, now let's get a little volume. And a young Somali explains what it's like to listen to Somali music from the 1970s. Oh, that's exciting. Somali music from the 1970s, baby. Count me in. Those stories ahead on the world. Were physically, sexually, and abused. Native activists are praising the decision, but opponents say it's erasing history. Make more activists talkative. He is the. Man, this thing is picking up stations like crazy now. Listen how clean that is. All I'm doing is adjusting the uh, adjusting the tuner here. Adjusting the uh, the first 1,000 Texas National Guard troops are deployed across parts of the flood ravaged state with plans to bring in 10,000 more from other states. One of the Getting good stereo. That sounds pretty good, huh? Sounds all right, yeah. Oh, Ninety-three point seven, AJ, Sebastian, Jazzy. And the extreme, twenty-nine. Zero quarter. Zero quarter. Say at night for sure, but I know what I'm seeing. Sounds pretty good, huh? And this thing's picking up everything. Yeah, they all made great. Great one. Say easy listening, Leo. This is the kind of tuner that you wanted to pair with a real nice amplifier. Right now, I'm just using the little one watt wonder here. Salomón Rosas, el señor del consulado de México, viene con una invitación muy interesante. Todo eso, mucha diversión. En este programa, pues cada vez más macuarro regresa de. Y el ¿Y And we involve our patients in planning for their care so they know what to expect. And <laughs> 100.9. And just go to MacMillow.com, click the radio listener special tab, and use promo code SKY to get two premium king or queen pillows and two <laughs> The full moon shining bright. Edge of the water, we were feeling all right. Back down a country road, the girls are always hot and the beer is ice cold. Sounds pretty good, huh? Let's go to the room. 
de los temerarios. Hoy vamos a presentarnos a la música de Ulises Chávez y sus plebes. Eso se llama ¿Por qué me enamoré aquí otra vez? Se lo digo a los hermanos santos. Y estás conmigo. Me duele decirlo. That's pretty impressive. Hey, it's Middays with Mark Falcant. Remember, it's only got a little one watt amplifier. In the World Cafe, I first saw Tank and the Bangers a few years ago. <laughs> It's always fun to bring it back a unit that hasn't worked for 20 years. This uh, stereo light is real weak. Can you see it? Salas, comedores, recámaras, literas y mucho más. Solo los especiales de temporada de Furniture 2000. Cambie esa sala de... Incómodo. Aproveche los especiales de Furniture... Very interesting. Very interesting. This thing's still got a ton of issues with it. You can never send this out. You can never send this back to a client, that's for sure. Customer. The important issues of the day, like, would you rather have Lyme disease or a DUI? <laughs> Why not both? They're not mutually exclusive. Exactly. <laughs> well, because Tom used to, you know, you, you, you would you would throw people's keys in the woods keep them from, to keep them from drunk, driving. Right? Mm -hmm. You're going to get me in trouble. Yeah. Did you I guys see that? That light was really weak. Yeah, so I would, uh, no, I just have an indoor uh, FM antenna uh, right now. Because it made them look good. And I was much more... Uh, of deals that as long as they weren't see if you can see this light here. They the paperwork, they didn't get a DUI, just, you know, separate them from All the, the lighting circuits, the really screwed up thing on this thing. Now you want me one more time. <laughs> Very weak little light. Okay. 
But you know, at least that indicates that the uh, circuit is working. The FM detector circuit is working. So we have had some success today. I will be right back. All right, I am back. Okay, now lighting is on a whole separate circuit from the, uh, you know, you, you find people in life, they'll often, uh, they'll often turn on their units, they'll get lights, but they won't get anything else because the lighting is always on a separate circuit. But the problem is I don't have my schematic for this, uh, for this unit. And I suspect, guys, that down here, one of these fuses has cut loose down in this area. Remember what I showed you earlier? There are separate, there are separate sections here that are fused. And I think one of these has one of these is controls the lighting. But I'm very excited to have a working unit. You know, it's got oh fuck me. It's got sound coming out of it. Did you see all these? There's like five separate areas I really need. You know, some some stuff lights and some stuff doesn't. And that's no way to run a railroad. That's for sure. It's AM. <laughs> Uh, I was not always a football fan. Do you play football? Uh, fantasy football, but I was really good. Okay. <laughs> I am a uh, – I didn't appreciate football until I got married, and then I started loving watching the games on the weekend. Yeah. Isn't that the truth? None of us appreciate football till we get married. <laughs> <laughs> we'll give them points Interactive. Ah, interesting. All right. Well, Curious about some of these little side lights we have here. They're called fuse lights. I'm not sure I've got 
I've got some. I've got to find out where that contains. Uh, they're now uh, they're now like LEDs. They're like little bags of LEDs. Hey, North, how are you? Try popping one of these babies in. There's nothing out of that. Maybe you got to have them both in. So, many, so much of this stuff is wired in series. We're struggling, but we're getting it. Yeah, nothing on that. But the only little light I get is from the uh, meter and this very weak tuner light. Like I said, at least we've got. Uh, many times I tried to tell you. Many times I tried. Boys, I'm. Boys, I'm. Good progress today. Because people understand what's happening and we love it. Oh my god. <laughs> you guys are going to crack up when you hear this. You guys are going to crack up when you hear this. You know what happened? I took the voltage up to 65 freaking volts. You know, when I was going into protection mode, and I never took the voltage any higher than that. We've been running this damn thing on 65 volts, and I'm I'm driving myself nuts here. Like, why aren't I getting enough output out of this unit? It's because on the Variac, I've only got the voltage halfway to what it should be. I told you guys. Sometimes I ain't right in the head after surgery and stuff. So let me back off this amplifier. My goodness. Let me turn this back on. Oh, this is at 65, 65 volts. Yeah, the thing with fuses, you need to find out why they blow. Yeah. All right, we're pumping the... I'm wondering why that was so weak, that light. Okay, so we're all the way up now, and I gotta believe that's gonna make a difference. Man, look at how bright that light is now. Oh, heck yeah. Oh, man, I cannot believe it. I'm that dumb. Look at how nice that light is now. The days of Mark here on the Tom Hartman program on this uh, Wednesday first hour. And Deborah in St. Paul, Minnesota. You're on the you know, really establishes relationships for the I have all these damn fluorescent lights in here. I'm really 
good now. Nineteen seventy Pioneer Tuner. Big Sag, si quiera inscripción al gimnasio, señores. Oh, what a clean that is. Una joven, eso sí está muy triste. Special financing. So tell me about that, Todd. That's what we do here. When we have a holiday, we think about a for someone you love. That's why I recommend a free service called No, 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 Y sin embargo, déjame hacer your free book on financing. Let's try putting this back in the slot Call lights up there KSRO, The Drive with Steve Jackson. Siete, cinco, siete, one, seven, five. Are you ready on your day? Are you happy? Are you happy? I can be so warm and tender. Call me. Dr. Harry Albers and his team at Health Aware Dentistry. All right, well, that's really good. 575-1190. Call us today. Keep your smile for a lifetime. Hi, Corey. Now, time it is. It's back to school time. All right, well, that's good news. Remember, cool, right? It's that place you go that's Man. exciting, frustrating, fun, weird, and hopefully a safe place for friends because friends lift each other up. Want to throw someone at school a compliment? Well, Three Musketeers makes it easy to help you throw shine, not shade, with positive Ooh, messages right on guys, the back I'm that tell somebody that they're wonderful and that sometimes. they're awesome. So, grab your friend at Three Musketeers Bar with that light whipped out so... chocolate and give them a pickup at school right when they need it. I'm going to put a little more lubrication on this uh, variable capacitor drive down here. There's a lower one. Not real happy about how this tuner dial is still way too hard to turn. Let's see. Yeah, it's nice to see you. I'm just uh, got my own, all good from the doctor today, two days after surgery, so I probably shouldn't be jumping around like a maniac, but my belly is gone. Keep sliding that a little bit. Starting to work in, but it's still got some kinky areas here. I wonder if it's something down below. Yeah, I do too. Uh, easy. I thought we would do the uh, Sony today, but man, that thing's got... That thing has got more problems than you. I'm just not up to that in this kind of heat to uh, be dealing with that.
today and I've had this Pioneer tuner, this 1970 Pioneer TX, uh, whatever, what in the hell is this thing, the TX70, uh, TX700 that's been sitting here forever. It, uh, just irritating me, the light situation here. And I'm trying to look at some of these... No, these are um, these are Bose bookshelf speakers. Yeah, it'll be a good it'll be a good project for winter for sure. I got lots. I still got a million projects here. I just wish my eyes were better. I'm trying to look at these filaments. It's really really hard to tell. If these things are good or bad. I don't have any more screw in. Uh, I don't have any more of these screw in type bulbs. I've got to order some of them. Used to be nice when you had a radio shack that actually did something you could actually go up there and order or just walk into the parts place and pick up what you needed not anymore we used to have an electronic supply house down down in Roner Park you used to be able to just walk right in and get whatever you needed not anymore so I guess I'll put these original things back in but I'm happy today we've got the unit is uh, sounding good. The tuner's working good right through our little amplifier, our vintage amplifier. It's a 1970 tuner through a 1959 one watt amplifier. A little bit of history there. All right. So, I don't get any lighting on AM either. This is the AM dog. <laughs> well, you're starting to move a little better now. I don't have an AM antenna. A little more popular, so. Back up to before Cesar Chavez as you travel toward the lower deck. Press. 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 Here's worth a thousand words, and I love that they have that, and I, I hope we see more of that. You're always on video now, and that way we can tell what's really happening. Uh, but it, you That's know, our local KSRO. They they're just going to their job. Sure, they're trained, but they're going to their job. They're all of a sudden put in a very life-threatening situation, and they have to make a quick decision. They didn't ask for this. It was put in front of them, and sometimes they make the wrong decision. But I think 99.9% .9 of the time, they try to do the right thing. And I, I understand Kaepernick's point of view. It's great uh, that he feels that way, but I just think he's chosen the wrong path. Todd, let's take you quickly in Leominster, Massachusetts. What do you think? Hey, Tom. Thanks for taking my call. I, I agree with you on uh, him taking the wrong path. Uh, I, I was in the Air Force for 24 years. I, I enjoyed my time in the service. I was allowed to serve overseas. We stood for foreign uh, national anthems before we yes, listened to them. Yes, I don't know. I'm not getting anything out of that light at all. Uh, the way we, uh, we do. Um, I think that the NFL players oh, are a, a profession of arms uh, yeah, it's and not. they represent the NFL. Uh, Let's see. Players, and they shouldn't be. Oh, the, yeah, this is a big, uh, for their, their causes. Corey, this yeah, is a big, uh, like said, Kenwood. I think Tom and I agree that, thanks for the call, Tom, the, 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 in their spare time, I'm that's what they call a big, uh, cathedral-style speaker here, movements and everything this else. Kenwood. He has liberty, he has the liberty to decide to do what he wants, yeah. okay? Yeah, it's a, it's um, a big and, hummer for sure. I think that I, I wish he wouldn't do All it. All right, here. well, the good news on the Hangout today, guys, is... That we have a working unit. The Joe Pag Show. The bad it's news small. is it's, it's not lighting at all. Sure and I could I could never return it to a customer. I mean, but they'd be happy. Oh yeah, it's running. That's great. They'd be happy it's running, but you know they want it all prettied up. They want all the lights and everything. 
functioning. So I'm going to have to get the schematic and tear into that a little bit and see what's going on. I think we'll save that for the next hang. Bill 1035 and 945 KSRO. Yep. And Let's take one more tune down the aisle here. Sure it was minimal at best. Like I have to cross the map on chapter three. I referenced it a moment ago. Environment. And to improve home comfort. One on one support available by calling the home upgrade advisor. 866 878 the lights light up for FM stereo. Stay up to the sun, have a right to move, baby tell me the truth. We got some success today. by storing your retirement at home with an Augusta home delivery. What you mean to? What you mean to? Thanks. I was afraid to eat this. For me. I want to thank you guys for being along today. We had uh, quite a bit of success getting this unit going again. We had a uh, bad power supply, big capacitor we changed out, did some lubricating of the controls, brought up power slowly on it. And what do you know, lo and behold, we've got a nicely working unit. But like I said, it's not the kind of thing that you could ever return to somebody because, well, the the tuner dial string is still not working properly. It still doesn't flow well across there. And, uh, you know, the lighting is another situation, too. But uh, I want to thank you guys for being along. We've at least got the hard part out of the way. What I'm going to do now, I, I'll be working several projects simultaneously, obviously, with the surgeries and everything else that I've had. I've been very backed up with things to do, so I'll be interweaving it in. I'll be getting obtaining the schematic for this uh, tuner, this beautiful Pioneer 1970 TX7T. What is, what is this? Why do I keep saying that? You got a TX700 tuner. It really is a great unit circa 1970. It really pulls in the signals beautifully. But I want to be able to take time to uh, get the schematic, understand a little bit about how the lighting circuit is running, go around, test some voltages and some other things, because it looks like one of those low board fuses has blown down underneath the ones that we talked about before. They have a lot of these uh, fusible links down here, showed you before. All these down in here 
We need to under, understand the flow. Number one, time has made these so you really can't see inside of them. They have been, they become fogged with time. So it's impossible to tell. So I really want a schematic to be able to tell me to follow the, uh, you know, to follow the wiring from the lighting that you see here. I have all the lighting components. We have some side lighting here that's supposed to light up the dial across here. Uh, that doesn't appear to be getting any power, so we're going to have to take off the shroud and do some other things, too, to determine uh, what's going on. But I've got to make a little headway and get in a little bit of a schematic first, and then we'll be ready to really get into... Uh, into it. Well, this is the first one I hope to do. Um, you know, winter time we're going to be on the road a lot, but when I'm home, I do hope to enjoy. I hope you guys will enjoy some of these uh, restorations. I like to take them to completion. I don't like to take them halfway and then stop. But uh, since I don't have a schematic for this one. I'm going to give myself a little bit of a pass today and say, hey, it's great that we've got, uh, it's great that we got the audio working. And uh, as the Chinese say, ibu, ibu, one step, one step at a time. Thanks so much for being along today. And uh, yeah, continuity. The problem when you continuity test the fuses is you're going to be continuity testing everything in the whole circuit. They have to be lifted up from the board and tested from continuity or you're not testing to the fuses, you're testing connectivity everywhere else uh, on the board there. So that's the issue with that. Anyway, everybody, thanks so much for being along today and another fun workshop hangout. The assessment and beginning restoration to the 1970 Pioneer TX700 tuner. Thanks, everyone.